Dr. John Guinan with Interventional Radiology here to talk through this case of um, trauma and splenic artery embolization and more specifically a proximal splenic artery embolization. So this was a person involved in a motor vehicle collision, uh, had abdominal pain and you know a little bit softer blood pressures which responded to some fluids. They were concerned that the patient was bleeding, so they got a CT scan uh, that was, you know, obtained in the arterial phase to look for bleeding. So that's how this initial scan comes to us. And as you can see, this left upper quadrant is markedly abnormal. Um, the spleen itself is minimally enhancing um, with a lot of higher density fluid. And then, you know, there are areas of globular arterial enhancement that are the same um, intensity or density of, as the blood pool. So we're concerned that some arterial hemorrhage and then even more concerning, there looks like there's layering contrast outside of the spleen uh, just within the peritoneal cavity. So this is consistent with a grade 5 uh, splenic injury with active hemorrhage. So typically, you know, the decision is, does this patient need to have an urgent splenectomy with surgery, or is it someone who would be a good candidate for um, endovascular embolization? If the patient is unstable, vital signs at all, the surgeons typically take them for surgery. In this case, even though the patient came in with some softer blood pressures, she or the patient stabilized and um, I had a discussion with the surgeon and they wanted me to uh, attempt endovascular uh, treatment and if that failed they would take her to uh, surgery so that's what we did she came for a splenic artery angiogram uh, and just a note when you're looking through the angiogram studies um, typically you'll see kind of repetitive images like a single image and then a run so that single image is usually the characteristic image from the run, but you can look through the run to get the full sense of how things look in time, which is always nice. So when I do an angiogram, I always start by getting ultrasound access into a common femoral artery. It doesn't matter which side, typically. Uh, most people like getting access into the right common femoral artery because most of us are right-hand dominant, and we can hold the ultrasound with our left hand and use the right uh, hand to access the artery. Also, our angio suite's just set up where it's easier for us to stand on the patient's right. So even though it's an arbitrary uh, decision, most people will still get right common femoral artery access as we did here. I save this image because it shows that I accessed the femoral artery directly over the femoral head, which is the safest spot for when we want to get hemostasis at the end of the procedure. Uh, so after getting access, we got access with a catheter into the celiac uh, trunk and then ultimately into the splenic artery and did a splenic artery angiogram. And as you can see, this is not what you'd expect when you look at a normal splenic artery because based on the CT, it is not normal at all. And just like on the CT, we see a little bit of area that's a normally perfused splenic tissue and then the rest of the boundary of the spleen is pretty markedly abnormal. We don't really see any uh, splenic parenchyma, which is enhancing anymore. And all these other uh, branches just kind of truncate. They just stop. Um, so that's a sign of arterial injury. And then if we go forward, oh, that was backwards. If we go forward, we can see some kind of vague enhancement. So that's consistent with hemorrhage and we see a little hemorrhage up here as well this little blush that doesn't go away all these little spots and then others which don't really blush but they also just don't enhance any tissues so they could be traumatic dissections or just traumatic injuries where blood flow is no longer going through the area so lots of abnormal arteries in the spleen and even some areas of active hemorrhage that need to be taken care of. So in the setting of splenic artery trauma and embolization, there are two options. 
we can either try to embolize as close to the area of abnormality as possible. Um, and typically we do that if there's like one focal abnormality. And that's best case scenario because you can get a tiny catheter or a microcatheter out as close to the defect as possible and then block the blood flow to that defect. And then in that case, you can maintain normal blood flow to the, less, left, the rest of the spleen, excuse me. In this case, that is just not possible because there's too much abnormality. So in this case, it's better for us to do a proximal splenic artery embolization where the goal is to stop the blood flow much more proximally and so we treat all this area. The upside to treating it so proximally is there's still some collateral flow coming from short gastric arteries and pancreatic branch arteries so hopefully the spleen won't infarct and then possibly need a splenectomy anyway. So that was the goal for this case and as you can see these all these uh, pancreatic branches here that hopefully will be maintained and give us some blood flow. So that was the goal. We measured the splenic artery for sizing on what type of embolic material we're going to put in there. We got a big sheath, which is you know larger caliber than even a catheter, into the proximal splenic artery so we can put our special vascular occlusion device, in this case an Amplatzer plug, uh, here. There's lots of options for embolic uh, embolizing things. You can use coils, which are little metal filaments that coil up and stop blood flow. A vascular plug is like a bigger uh, nitinol device that stops blood flow there. And then you wouldn't use it in this case, but other options would be gel foam or tiny particles. Um, all which can be used to embolize. But in this case, we were using a plug. So we got there. We take pictures to make sure that that is the place that we want to embolize. And then we put in our embolic agent somewhere here. So you kind of get a sense, this little tri-lobed um, structure here and you can see it has a, a radiopaque marker here and here. This is a um, Amplatzer plug, Amplatzer 2 plug. So <clears throat> then it's still attached to the wire but I can take pictures to make sure that I liked it. If I didn't like it I could with a little difficulty get this sheath back over it to not deploy it but we eventually liked the way it looked and took a picture and we've blocked everything going to the spleen from the splenic artery, but there's still flow coming from the short gastrics and also a little bit from the pancreatic branches. Uh, so this is enough to take the pressure off and allow those bleeding spots to stop, but hopefully enough to continue perfusing what little spleen is left. And then we always take a final picture of where we access to make sure that it's suitable for using a closure device, which it was, uh, and this ended up going really well for the patient.